It's called the Trespass Bill, or which is now a Trespass Law. This could be a serious problem. I'm feeling a little bit nervous. We are getting out of Cornwall. It was fine, and now it's got a no overnight parking sign, which means you can't park there. It's gonna be tricky, but we're gonna give it a go. Welcome back to the channel. We're Janine and Liam Day, a married couple who are attempting, despite all the challenges we are facing, to live and travel full-time in our converted removals truck camper van conversion in the UK. We are currently doing an almost full circular route of mainland Britain, starting and ending in Kent. Last week we continued our journey through Cornwall, but a festival in the Midlands took us away from our route and plunged us into the hottest days ever recorded in the UK. This week our travels take us back to Cornwall, where time is almost running out for us. We have just enough time to visit the most historical and magical parts before we have to leave quickly. It's going to be a crazy week, so please hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and let's see what adventures we go on this week in Morgan, our removals van. Good morning, welcome back to the channel we are back in Cornwall Woo! Um, yeah we made it all the way back down it took us it, all in all it took us about eight or nine hours to get back from the festival back down to Cornwall again man that was a journey and it's, it was the hottest day of the year I can't tell you I mean many of you out there will probably know what it was like because we've, we've all been through it in this episode on this leg of the journey we are heading into Cornwall um, along the north coast and into Devon actually, believe it or not, into North Devon. The time is against us because the kids are breaking up from school in just a couple of days and we've got a lot to see before then. I don't know if we're going to get a chance to see it all and if we're going to make it out in time, but we're going to give it a bloody good go. As you know from this channel, we don't mind giving these things a go. We're on our way to Hale where we're going to go and see some friends and eat some really nice plant-based food. Oh my god, heat wave officially over. I do hope it comes back though. We are now heading to Asda and we're gonna grab some bits just whilst it's horrible weather. Hopefully this clears. Um, when it does, we're gonna go and grab some food from that caravan behind our van. And they sell really nice food there, so. But we have to sit outside. Um, so it'd be nice if it was clear, not raining. But anyway, Asda. What are you making tonight? I'm thinking like a shakshuka, you know, like um, which is usually like it's an Israeli breakfast, I believe. Um, but it'd be well nice with tofu and bread. Not bread, we need something else other than, rather than bread, grains of some sort, something. But yeah, shakshuka. Sounds good. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Fresh food delivery from the home. Blooming starving. It's close, it's almost 24 hours since we've last eaten. Let's go, let's go and eat. Cool, food shop done. Now we're gonna go to one of our favorite eateries. Um, I'm really excited. We came here last year and the food is just so good. And the people that work there are so friendly. I'm really excited to see them after all this time. Had something amazing last time we was here, some sort of tahini thing, it was incredible. Yeah, I remember that, it was lovely. Yeah, vegan lamb kebab first, and uh, and then yeah, we'll see what happens after that. What are you having? BLT. A BLT, nice. Okay. How are you? I'm good. Hey guys, how are you doing? How are you doing? Hello. Did you see what just happened? So we were in the queue, and some scribes came over, and we let that lady come through, and she took the cakes that I was gonna go for. Oh, can't, I couldn't believe it. Fate though, it's fate. It's meant to happen, right? Everything happens for a reason. Never, ever. Never, ever. Never let for anyone. a reason, right? We missed out on some pasties. However, we ordered one plant-based lamb kebab and a BLT with a Biscoff cake and two coffees. We didn't want to disturb the crow, so we went and sat on the crates on the floor to eat. The food was incredible, as always, and the people were friendly. We ate up our food and made our way back to the van. Just want to talk really briefly about something big in the news that's happened recently that affects van lifers. Potentially, on the outset of it, looks like it could stop van life for us forever. It's definitely worth talking about. It's called the Trespass Bill, or which is now a trespass law. A bill obviously being something that gets passed through Parliament and then it gets agreed upon and then becomes law. It's now become law from what we understand. By the way, anything I'm about to say, don't take for gospel or for granted. Please do your own research. There's many experts out there. We are not them. We are just people who van life full time. From what we understand about it, it's been floating about for ages. It's been spoken about in the van life community for a long time. Ever since we've started doing van life, which has been 16 months now, as you know, 
we sort of free camp most nights. If we're not free camping, we're paying in a car park to stay there. And then the occasional once in a blue moon campsite. If there was a law out there to stop us from doing van life, it would be a really big concern because this is our way of life, lifestyle, and it's our home. It's also, you know, it's everything to us. So at the start, I was really concerned. And I'll be honest with you, even though it's been passed recently, just a few weeks ago, it got passed as a law. I'm not concerned. It basically, it's the right that any authority, say the police have, to not only move you on, but potentially take your van away from you, fine you, even imprisonment from what we understand, if you're deemed to be camping in your van in a public space. So it's quite serious. The abuse of this law would be quite serious. Um, it would take away freedoms. Freedom being mine and Janine's highest currency. It really is everything to us. So I'm not keen on any laws that take away our freedom. But from what I understand, this law is not about us. It's not intended for us. It's intended for people who simply won't move on from spaces that are in the public spaces that I guess need to move on because of they're causing disruption, a mess, environmental issues, and just a hell of a lot of people complaining about them and all of that sort of business. But moving that to one side, most van lifers we know sort of move on quite regularly. There are van lifers obviously that stay in one position for the whole time and that's their way of life. And there's all different sorts of van lifers, but our ones we move on all the time. So from our perspective, we got some insight from an ex-superintendent copper and the channel uh, Life Is Too Short. Go and check them out. Ken is a very, very, very sensible bloke. I consider him a friend as well. Friend who never met, but digital friend. Really, really nice people, Ken and Carol. Um, anyway, he's his ex-superintendent. He did a video on this a long time ago, giving some ad advice about it as an insight from his experience with the police force. And he said, basically, look, if you get the knock and a copper tells you to move on, most people probably would move on. I can talk from our experience because we're in an experience where we travel quite a lot. That's exactly what we would do. Failure to that, we would probably, the first thing I would probably do is we get the knock on the door. Let's make this clear. We've only ever had one knock on our door asking us to move on. And that's because we was in a National Trust car park and we weren't supposed to be there and we didn't know it was a National Trust car park. That was the only time it's ever happened in 16 months. And you know what? Moving forwards, so long as we look at restrictions and where we should park and where we can't park and, you know, public right away and all that sort of stuff, I don't see that changing. I really, really one ho wholeheartedly don't. Copper knocks on our door of our camper van late at night and says, what are you doing here? I would say straight away, we're not feeling too good or we're feeling tired and we just need to pull over and have some rest. And if they said, would you mind moving on, please, causing disruption, I would straight away turn around to that police and say, look, it's late. Thank you for letting us know. Would you mind if we stay just for one night and we'll be gone first thing in, our, in the morning, you have our word. And then you should imagine the, the copper probably would say, yeah, as long as you're gone first thing in the morning, don't worry about it. Exchange, transaction, done, happy days. If he did say, no, you're causing a disruption, just being here, you shouldn't be here, then we'd of course move on. We wouldn't want to because it's, you know, it's a nightmare finding park ups at night. It really is. So yeah, that would be the way, which way around we go. We know that there's certain people who have economic problems with moving on, cost of diesel and all the rest of it. It's not an ideal situation for anyone. There's only one rule that we've come across with doing van life and that is leave no trace. It's the one main rule that applies to van life. It applies to everything in life really, but especially with van life. If you go by that rule, leave no trace, you should be all right. That's what we live by. So if you live by that, there really shouldn't be any problems. At the moment, we're not worried. So that's our answer. We're not worried. We definitely don't live in fear of something unless it's happening. We spend too much time of our lives as human beings living in fear and it's not good for you at all and life's way too short. The second part of it, just very, very briefly, that we are experiencing a lot. And I don't think it's got anything to do with the trespass bill or the trespass law, but you know, do apologize if if you if you think it is, you might feel like it's directly related. What we're noticing quite a lot is parking restrictions, no overnight parking signs coming up everywhere, official ones. Some of our favorite spots or some spots that we're looking forward to going to that are on a, a, an app like Park for Night, which is the one we used to look for park quite a lot of the time. And then you arrive at that spot and a week ago it was fine. And now it's got a no overnight parking sign, which means you can't park there. That's a separate matter. I think what that comes down to more than anything is van lifers not leave, actually leaving a trace, you know, leaving a mess. Whether they're van lifers, whether they're other people, whether it's just holiday goers. We see a lot of holiday goers making a right old mess. Very rarely have seen a van lifer make a mess. That's a separate issue. It's happening quickly. We're going across lots of places where they used to not be and now they are. Usually it happens when vans are parked up in front of residential places and spoiling views and stuff, I should imagine. I just wanted to bring that into it. This could be a serious problem, but at the moment we're not worried about it we're full-time van lifers. If you've got any comments yourself or any opinions, please feel free to leave them in comments. We do read all of them and yeah, be interesting to hear what you say. Okay, cool. So food is done. We ended up fasting for 24 hours before that and we were both ravished. Um, it was ridiculous. But now we're leaving Hale and we're going north back to where we started off last time. So um, we left at you in Poles F last, last time and then now we're going up to Tintagel. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. 
Uh, we've never been there before, so that's really good. And it's sort of on the way out of Cornwall. The whole aim of what we're doing right now is to get the hell out of Cornwall before the kids break up from school, which is imminent. You know, it's in the next sort of like two to three days. So we are getting out of Cornwall. We're on now going north, going out of Cornwall, but we're gonna try and squeeze in a bit of North Devon as well. It's gonna be tricky, but we're gonna give it a go. We left this area for the last time and made our way north, topping up on diesel on the way, which in most recent times pains me every time we do it. Oof, that's expensive. We enjoyed for one of the last times our satnav taking us down the small Cornish roads, as he always loves to do, and made our one and a half hour journey to a small town called Tintagel. actually a really pretty little town. You know what's interesting about this? This one's got, they're, they're saying you can camp here for the night. No way, yeah. really? It's a, it's a really cute little town. So I'm thinking we park up, we go for a cup of tea, um, we go check out this post office, which is like a famous medieval post office, and then go and find this castle. So that's what I'm thinking we do. Where is it, Liam? It's a, it's a, not, it's a, it's a really old post office, a medieval post office. How amazing! And they're still collecting post at ten fifteen every day. <laughs> I'm a bit concerned that time, for some reason, it's taking us forever to get from South Cornwall to North Cornwall. I'm just thinking that just take this as a sign that we've gone into a car park where you can stay overnight. There's a waterfall nearby called St Necton's Glen. That's supposed to be really, really nice. Is it? Yeah. So. Okay. And just go hell for leather tomorrow. So this place is really, I don't know, it's got something to it. There's like crystal shops and we've seen a few sort of hippies knocking around. I think it's like a bit of a hippie town or there's something going on that's quite mystical around here, which is really cool. So I'm quite intrigued. <laughs> you did well there, so you are. Oh my god! <laughs> With our plans changing by the second, we decided to make a really quick, easy meal this evening and save the bigger meal for when we have time on our side. What we've decided to do is, I think we're gonna. There's a because there's this like mystical waterfall nearby that's supposed to be like the most spiritual place in the whole of the UK. Um, we're gonna. But it's closed now. We're going to stay overnight here in Tintagel or Tintagel, um, and we're going to get some, just going to get some really quick food to cook in that car park and stay overnight in that car park, and then wake up early and go and see the, the waterfall. We grabbed some food and headed back to the van. Oh. Right, quick meal night tonight, isn't it? Eat fast, wake up, sleep, repeat. Oh wow, camp out, vegan camp out last weekend was not only brilliant, but it was bloody hot. Uh, we ended up leaving vegan camp out on the hottest day ever in this country and we drove back down to Cornwall on the hottest day ever. The drive itself was, like Janine said, this is hell. It took most of the day. It was really bad. We don't have air conditioning in the front of the van when we're driving, so the windows were open, stopping regularly for water, traffic jams. It was crazy. So much so that we had to stop at Prey Sands we, and we were like, right, first time we see the sea, we're stopping, we're getting in the sea. Many people have been asking as well in comments what, how we ke have kept cool during it. We're very, very fortunate this van is really thickly insulated. Insulation keeps it warm but it also keeps it fairly cool as well so there's fairly thick insulation around it other things is we've got four windows here we've got and we've got a big extra large roof hatch and then we've got a max air fan and the max air fan has been a lifesaver it's got obviously in and out functions so it takes air out brings air in different speed settings but it's also got a setting on it as well where you can um, set it to auto 26 degrees it's not cold it's not cool but it's so much better than 40 degrees or 50 degrees. So we use that at night time and actually keeps us pretty cool. With all of those things together and not wearing many clothes, the hottest day ever recorded in this country and we did we did fine. Park up by the coast, bit of sea breeze coming through. It's not bad in here. I think it was a good test for Europe, but we're gonna see. I think Europe's got a lot higher temperatures as we know, 47 degrees recorded there recently. So anyway, I just wanted to give you an update on that. So tonight on the menu, we have a Middle Eastern chickpea casserole, 
and we're having it with the packet rice and some wild rocket. It's not very exotic, but it's a quick meal night. Thank you, this is a treat. It's not really, it's only a tint. Yeah, but it's nice though, isn't it? It looks, you know, we've, we've, it's all, they're organic and it's a nice bit of salad on the sides as well. Happy days. done and now it is sunset and uh, we're gonna go for a bit of a wonder because we feel like we haven't really got enough exercise today um, we've been driving quite a lot so we're heading into town we're gonna have a bit of a wonder and yeah and go back and have a cup of tea and call it an evening we've just spotted the sunset it looks beautiful over the sea it's bright orange and lovely you know when it lights up the sky so uh janine and i have just come for a walk at sunset down to the castle what we thought was was, was this one here from a distance the silhouette because the sun's behind it um we thought it was uh we thought it was the castle but a modern looking castle from a distance um on closer inspection it's in fact a hotel called castle hotel so um yeah head scratcher um there's going to be a castle around here somewhere because everyone that's street named castles and arrows pointing towards castles there's castle car parks we still haven't found it after seeing the wrong castle we headed back to the van to call it an evening admiring the quartz crystals lining the walls and the streets making the town even more mystical and magical <laughs> Get no rest. No, no. I've been down so long that my mind can't get no rest. No, no. This ain't easy, darling. Cause the devil's on my. Oh, it's a nice day today. The wind's down a little bit and the sun is out. It's nice and warm, I think. <laughs> you sound cautious. <laughs> I'm not With everything you say, it's a nice day today. <laughs> the wind's down, I think. I don't want to be too over optimistic. What do you reckon? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm up for it. Are you up for that? I'm up for, I'm up for everything. You, the, the forecast that you've just said. <laughs> All the could be, should be's, would be's. Let's go and experience it. Yeah, after this. Good morning, everyone. Today we have woken up in the sunny town of Tintagel. Um, it's really bright actually this morning, my god. Um, it was a really nice park up. We had a camper van either side of us and we were the only camper vans in the car park overnight. Um, so it was quite peaceful. We had a really good night's sleep. We've woken up this morning and it's a lovely day and we are planning to go out to into Tintagel today and check out the sites that we missed out on yesterday. So we're going to go to this waterfall, this majestic, beautiful sounding waterfall and see what that's all about. Um, and I'm actually really excited about that. We're also going to go and see this castle. We're also maybe going to go for breakfast um, as well, if we can find anywhere. And then, and yeah, and then we're leaving Cornwall. We're actually going to head north from here, but we'll tell you more about that later. We're gonna go out now, breakfast, coffee, castle, waterfall, and that's the plan. So off we went to go and find the castle. The castle cost 19 pounds each to explore. Upon arrival, we found out that Merlin's cave is accessible directly underneath the castle grounds at low tide. Merlin being King Arthur's magician. The tide was coming in, which meant there was a slight chance we could go and see it. So as usual, we had to rush. Making a prompt walk to the cave, we realized we had just missed the opportunity. However, the cave and beach surrounding it looked majestic. A really pretty yet rustic beach with big rocks and a feeling of many magical spells and prophecies taking place once upon a time. We sat down 
down on a rock thinking about the wizards and kings who have sat in this very place. beach. I don't know if it's just because it was so beautiful or that it actually has magic embedded in it or magic mystical things have happened there before but it definitely had some reverence to it and um, I've, I felt it but once again I, fe I feel it at beautiful places as well but that was a really stunning spot very 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 special thoroughly recommend. So in the back of a, uh, a Land Rover, it takes you from the bottom to the top. It's a very, very steep hill, especially when you're wearing flip-flops. Um, the whole thing's very steep, so be very careful if you're um, with access and um, disabilities and stuff like that. It's not, it's not for everyone, I don't think. Um, but there are portions of it, I think, that you can get to, um, that viewpoints and stuff that aren't really steep. Anyway, the walk down alone is quite steep. <laughs> so this Land Rover service, for, um, between £1.50 and £2.50, takes you to the top and bottom and what have you. We, I'm not strangers to walking, I'm quite happy with walking, but time's against us a little bit today, so um, we're going back up in the Land Rover. Thank you. Can I get you in close to the pub? <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, pal. Castle and Cave done, we headed off for lunch in a little cafe called Scoop, which served a cheese panini and chili nachos and they were delicious. We then headed off back to the van to go to the waterfall. Okay, so we're back at the van now and we are off, but we're just gonna go down the road to the waterfall. Um, this majestic waterfall that we've heard so much about. Liam got given a pasty on the way out of that lovely cafe. Because I'm just so cool. <laughs> Why did she give you a pasty? I don't know, I think we had a connection. Um, no, I, I, she also saw the big fat camera as well. Yeah, probably. No, 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 they were actually really, whoever's watching who's uh, vegan or trying to go vegan or whatever, Scoop in Tintagel um, is, has a really, uh, she's vegetarian and she's really interested in veganism and vegan products. She's got apparently the best vegan biscuits there. We've had some amazing vegan food and incredible vegan fudge as well. And a vegan pasty for later on. Oh my word, we're gonna need to fast for years after this trip. <laughs> We headed off in search of this waterfall. Subs subscriber helping us park, eh? Happy days. Oh, you so good here, thank you. He's gonna come out of there and he's gonna go in there. Bit tight as always, isn't it? Thank you. We made our way to finally see this waterfall. Two minutes into the walk and we were wowed by the serene beauty of what we were seeing. We were just walking along chatting and didn't realise it went from some like a residential area to being a tropical forest. <laughs> An absolutely unbelievable, beautiful tropical forest where everything's covered in green. Even the wood is covered in green from the ivy climbing over it. It's just... Uh, <laughs> That, it, it's only nettle stings, but it, it did shock me. Oh, for God's sake. That'll be twinging. It's right on my little finger on my bone. That'll be twinging for ages now. Were you, were you about to say it's just paradise? I was about to say it's just paradise. <laughs> Goes to show you, yeah? you can't have paradise with a little bit of sacrifice. And we say it all the time. Well, we just walked past um, a lady who was leaving and she was just like wow have you been up there and we said no we're on our way now and she said whoa she said, that. get ready she said get ready get under the water get get under the water get under the stream it's gonna blow your mind she went wow 
She, I don't know if she works here or not. <laughs> we haven't She's bought good, a ticket yet, you see. Good for promotion. <laughs> yeah. And now I'm really, really, after that reaction, I am really intrigued. Um, I've never seen anyone walking out of a forest like that before. And she was all dressed and in sort of like She was dressed cool, as so. like, gla like glamorous dress. Earthy, glamorous wear, yeah. A lovely hat. Yeah, I feel well underdressed now. <laughs> this is unbelievable. It's just got something about it. We've been in many woods, many forests, many streams, many rivers, many different things in life, but this has got something about it. It really, really does. I can't believe how beautiful this walk is, my God. It's like you're walking along a path with a little trickly little stream going not deep either, like a really small shallow stream um, on the side of you. And yeah, it's just so pretty. And we've gone the wrong way. I've actually got it on film where we took the wrong turning and it said waterfall that way. He said that the sign's pretty dodgy, isn't it? Yeah. Said this way. Oh well, come then, back we go. You know you've turned up somewhere good when there's incense yeah. everywhere. It just smells Sorry, lovely no, here. No, no. Turn left, you're back in the woods. Lovely, no thank you. Thank you. This place is of a huge scientific interest because of, uh, because of all of the uh, tropical stuff that's growing here naturally. The ecosystem, basically it's like a tropical ecosystem. Different types of fungi that you won't get anywhere else and it's just growing without sort of needing to plant them or cultivate them. They're just doing it by themselves because it's a sort of, it's a sort of microclimate, which is amazing. Just listen to that sound. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Sounds like Liam sorry. in the morning. Sorry, I had to do that. <laughs> oh, wow. It does feel like we're somewhere tropical, doesn't it? Oh, the whole, the whole walk. As soon as you walked into this woods, yeah. we were gassing away and bam. <laughs> we were in the heart of the woods <sighs> with a little stream going by. And check out this Buddha. Is this even England? <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, no. If you, let, if you don't think about stuff too much, you can, you can literally just get taken away to anywhere in the world. I know. unbelievable like a 60 foot waterfall that goes into a pool that filters through a giant hole and then comes down to this beautiful sort of like fairy pool at the bottom and then we're climbing across stepping stones to get to it surrounded by tropical fauna that they've got no idea how it's growing here or at least it, it sounds that way there's a lot of mystery involved in it and it's one of the most spiritual places in the whole of the UK I mean I can't really say much more than that.
We had such a great time at this waterfall, but all good things must come to an end and it was time to leave. Okay, so we're leaving Cornwall now. We're going to North Devon. It's gonna take us about an hour and a half to get there, which I'm a bit shocked about actually. I didn't realize it was so far. I thought we were quite long, along through, the, um, through Cornwall, but obviously not. But then again, we're going down these single track roads again. And this is the reason why we're leaving, the main reason why we're leaving Cornwall right now. And we'll be leaving Devon soon as well is because the roads are too small to have big vans like ours down it when there's lots of traffic and the kids are breaking up from school it, tomorrow uh, literally tomorrow so our plan now is to get the hell out of dodge <laughs> we, we're leaving we're getting the hell out of dodge and we're getting to north devon because at least in north devon we've only we've just got to leave the north devon bit and then we can go into somerset from there um, but what we're planning on doing is we're going to try and get to a, 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 a park up that we can stay at for a, a couple of nights. Um, and we're hoping that potentially Woolacum might be that place. So, but the first place we want to go to now is both of our, one of our, one of our top beaches in the whole of North Devon and still the UK as well. We love it. It's like the Poles F, which we, you saw in the last video of North Devon. That's where we're heading now. That is the very reason, the very reason why we're leaving. It's okay if you're in one place in Devon or Cornwall, but if you're in, if you're traveling like we do, it's not fun. Here we go. All right, mate. We made our way to a coastal town called Croyd, where we drove straight into a car park right by the beach. Wow, that was a long drive. Um, ended up being a couple of hours in the end, getting around Devon and Cornwall on those little roads. Man, it, it's just some, it's something that you don't miss about when you leave here. Anyway, let's go and check out Croyd Beach. And after Croyd Beach, uh, we've got to go and find a park up. Croyd is not a good place for wild camping. Uh, we've learned that before. Um, unfortunately, it's definitely the place to come for camping on campsites. Um, so we're going to have to pull a little number um, later on in the evening, probably when it gets dark. Um, and we'll let you know more about that shortly. So I'm not sure if Liam said, we parked up in a National Trust car park. Um, just behind me here. In front of me is the sea and the beach, but behind me is this um, huge hill. Can't remember what it's called, but if you climb it, you can go see the sunset and it, you get some really nice views up there. We did it last year. We probably won't do it this year because we're gonna head to the beach. We're low on time, so that's our main priority. But yeah, if you come here, definitely it's worth giving that a climb. We headed off to the beach, climbing over rocks to get there. Croyd Beach is a perfect little surf beach which backs off onto a lovely surf town. With a few restaurants, shops and bars and surrounded by hills, it's an idyllic place which we love. So nice to be back, isn't it? Yeah. It's just so, so beautiful. It's like a surfer's paradise and a beachgoer's paradise too. So that's Croyd, um, absolutely beautiful. We are now, we're both feeling a bit hungry, so we're gonna go and get some food from someone who we really hope is here. He was here last year, and if he is here, he's just around the corner. He brings, a, he brings sunshine to every single beach, <laughs> even on the, on the dimmest days. Du, du, du. Oh. Oh. <laughs> What's going on? He's not here. Oh, there he is, he's down here, oh. look. <laughs> Phew, I can see his van. Oh, no, no, you're back, you're back, you're back, you're back. It's my birthday today as well. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Vlogging, vlogging on my birthday. Vegan, vegan on my birthday. How's everything going? How's everything going? Very good, mate. We yes, we man. called you up earlier. Yeah, I know, yeah, I know, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your name come up on my phone. Did it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Did it really? Yeah. You, you, you want to come to Jamaica? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes. You want to come? 100%. Yeah, yeah. Come down with me. 
would love to. I'm going in September. You do jer jackfruit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. the best we've had. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Best we, jackfruit wow. we've we had. eat a lot of food, right? Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's the best. Oh, cool. It's yeah. the best jerk chicken we've ever had. Yeah, yeah. Like, yes, yes. That's the rice and peas. Rice and peas. Look at that vegan. Look at that jackfruit. <laughs> Trust me. Look at that jackfruit. Look at it. Oh man, that is the best jerk jackfruit. Trust me. In in the UK and also Jamaica. Yeah, yeah. Served only by Monty himself. <laughs> oh yeah. And Janine's going for the rasta rasta chana. Are you yeah. still making your your own sauce? Yeah, man. See there. You, you want both of them, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Both of them as well, Janine. Yes, please. It's the hottest sauce in the country. This is a sweet sauce. I'm good. Oh, that's a sweet one. Right? Yeah. It's got one of the real deal. This is the real deal. Yes. Served only by Monty. Yeah, in Croy. Yeah. <laughs> is it original? Original Monty. <laughs> <laughs> lime and coconut coleslaw. Oh, lime and that looks amazing. Yeah, lime and coconut. Yeah, I like that music that you put on it. You know that background music? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> can, can you give me some reggae? Janine. Oh my god. My mouth is on fire. That hot sauce is so hot. I don't think I can eat any more of it because it's just my tongue is just getting hotter and hotter. You think you'd be able to do a vegan ice cream? Mm. <laughs> I've only had a tiny bit of the hot sauce as well. That's the culprit there. It's not, that's the sweet stuff. Is it? Yeah. Oh, what's it? Oh, I've, just... I've eaten. Oh my god. <laughs> No wonder my tongue's burning. I ate the hot sauce without realising. Oh my god, I just, I must have just wolfed the hot sauce down in like big chunks then. Cause honestly, I, my mouth is on fire. You did, you just ate all in one go. Yeah. You're a nutcase, I saw you. <laughs> I thought that was it there. The food was delicious, but be warned with the hot sauce, it'll blow your head off. We grabbed some ice cream and headed back to the van. Okay, so it's time to leave and we are heading now to the next beach along. And the next beach is... Um, it's called Woolacombe and if it works out and we can actually park there overnight it's going to be one of the best park ups that we've ever been to. Um, if it doesn't work out then we're just going to have to try and sort something out. So I'm feeling slightly nervous. It's the first time going to Woolacombe in Morgan um, and yeah I'm feeling a little bit nervous but excited as well because if it works it's just going to be brilliant. So off we went to Willacombe, heading down one of the steepest single track roads we have been on in Morgan and arriving in Willacombe to find out our fates. Well, we're going to find out because it's very, very unclear whether there's, there's less camper vans here than there ever has been before. There's a camper van in front that looks like it's parked there for good. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there's new parking signs up everywhere. So it's interesting. Should we find out? Okay, so Liam has just gone off to go and check to see if we can park here because we're not too sure. Um, but I really hope we can because the sea's looking so nice and it's just the best park up, so fingers crossed. What? This used to be, we can say now, this 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 has been on a, few, on a couple of occasions, maybe three occasions, been a, a really good surf spot a really good park up where you can surf for a few days and it didn't really matter and you'd pay for the parking and you know and you and it was okay now there's parking signs all up down there i just spoke to a surfer over there and uh he said yeah there's loads of places in north devon i like it and he said they're really hot on it as well um the traffic warden will be here first thing in the morning anyway say la vie Let's not get down about it. Saying a sad goodbye to Willacombe, we turned Morgan around and left to head back to Croyd to go to a campsite. i
Good morning from Croyd Bay, not Woolacombe Bay, but Cherry Tree Campsite in Croyd. Not wild camping, unfortunately. Oh, yesterday absolutely broke my heart. Um, that was one of our favourite park ups. We've only been doing van life for 16 months, but that's one to look forward to, and it's, it's unfortunately rest in peace. Um, as we're seeing quite a lot with a lot of decent park ups around the country. Um, taste of things to come, maybe, I don't know. They really need to get on with uh, opening up these airs. Um, so that everybody can enjoy the spaces and the car parks and motorhomes, camper vans, regular holiday goers and make it just an, a, a balanced environment for everybody. Janine and I want to say thank you so much for following us um, around the sort of the southwest area of the UK. We've had such a good time. I hope you've re enjoyed it as well. And we want to say thank you for subscribing. Um, we've had a big, big influx of subscribers and viewers recently, and we just want to say thank you for that. And join us next time where we will be heading into Wales. We do not know Wales much at all. So, and we've never been there with Morgan. So it's going to be a very, very, very awesome adventure. And let's see what happens. See you next time.